Hello everybody. Uh, <clears throat> today we will talk about internationalization in a next JS project. Usually, uh, when you need internationalization, so internationalization means you want to support your website in multiple different languages. For example, let's this website. This only supports English, but if you want to add a support for a different language like from French or Italian or something like that, that is what we call internationalization. In a next JS project. Uh, if you visit the Next.js docs, you will see that they provide some good examples. There are already some existing libraries that you can use to do this kind of internationalization. The main idea, the most of the time, the basic idea of uh, supporting multiple languages are you will create JSON files for each of the languages you want to support. And you will connect, you will write the translation in each of those JSON files. So, for example, for English language, you will have a JSON file. For French, you will have another JSON file. And based on the language choice, you will load the appropriate JSON file so that the whole website is translated. But today, we'll see a different approach. Uh, today, we'll learn how we can translate a Next.js website using Google Translator. So, when is this useful? Uh, for example, recently I completed a very small project and at the end of the project, the client asked me if I can add support for multiple languages. Now, obviously, it was such a small project and we needed a quick and fast solution and the quality of the translation actually didn't matter that much. In those scenarios, Google Translator can be a great solution. So let me first show you what I uh, mean. So you can visit this. Uh, you can visit this repos repository for the whole uh, code base also. Uh, you can check out this blog. I'll link it in the comments to see how I have done it with all of the codes. And this is the live demo. So as you can see, we have a piece of English text here. We have multiple language support. So if I click on Dutch, yes, I don't know what is it. Uh, Spaniel. French, right? It is getting translated automatically, and I am not doing anything basically. It's a very simple setup, but a very effective solution. And I'll show you today how we can do it. Let's head over to the code editor. Uh, the first step is let's assume that you already have a Next.js project. Uh, the first thing is under the public assets folder, you add this lang.config file. This is the file where you can add as many languages as you want. Obviously, uh, the language have to be supported by Google Translator. So, and Google Translator actually supports many languages. So you should be fine. You just add an array here. So this is the configuration of the languages we want to support on our site. The second <coughs> uh, file is the configuration file for actually setting a cookie uh, or, or the setting for the language setting. So that is our second step. Uh, we have to import, so the whole translation process actually happens to by setting the cookie. So you have to install a dependency. That dependency's name is Nukis. So this is a simple JavaScript library that helps you to set and read cookies in your Next.js project. So install this one, then add these two files under the assets folder. First one is config, second one is translation. The third step is you go to your layout.tsx file. So inside the layout.tsx file, if you scroll down, you can see I have added three scripts. The first two scripts are actually basically loading these two files that I have added under the public folder. Third one is the Google Translator, uh, Google Translator script. So these are the three things you have to add in your layout.tsx file. One note here, if you're using page router for your Next.js project, you have to add this file in your underscore document.tsx file. That's the only difference. Everything else is as it is. The next thing to do is creating a component for actually switching the language. So uh, you can see uh, this code is actually commented out uh, for better understanding. You can see we have a specific cookie name. It is called Goog Trans. And you actually have to use this cookie name. There is no other way. Here we have some type declarations, not that important. We have two state variables. Uh, current language and language config. Uh, as we are using state, we actually make this a client component. Uh, then we use the use effects so that when initially 
the page loads or the application loads or when the, wherever this language switcher loads it can read whatever language was selected before from the cookies and then set that language for the site <clears throat> and if we don't find any language then we just take english as the default one how do you know what is english as you can see we are reading default language here in our lang config we actually declared english as our default so you can actually set your default language here as well uh, pretty straightforward and here is a simple function to switch the language if you read the code you can see we are actually basically setting the cookie and doing nothing else <coughs> and here we are just looking over all of the languages and showing those language options to the user you can customize this to create let's say a drop down or anything you want basically so i have it running locally already so let me show you so this is my uh, locally running project uh, as you can see the language switcher is on the left side and uh, i have a piece of text which is on the right side how am i getting this if you visit the page.tsx you can see i have imported the language switcher here and added some text for demonstration purpose here you can uh, switch between these different languages but you'll notice one issue as soon as you switch between switch to a language which is not your default language it actually uh, shows your translation header in the uh, which is native to the google translation uh, translator so you actually don't have any control over this this is obviously not a good thing to have so what we can do actually we can hide this uh, bar using a little css trick if you head over to the code i have added a simple piece of code here uh, in the globals.css file uh, basically taking the class name and making it display none forcing it to uh, have a display none and if you now visit the website it's still running on my local you can see i don't see the language bar anymore so that's basically it uh, this is the super fast way to add translation to any existing website one thing to note the quality of the translation depends on google translator which means sometimes the translation can be very uh, robotic so you have to be cautious about that if you need a proper translation solution you have to use one of the other libraries so this is just a solution if you need something quick but in my experience for most informational websites or landing pages this solution is just fine you basically don't have to do anything if you want to add a new language support you just go to your lang.config file and add a new language that's basically it thank you so much for watching this video uh, if you liked it give it a like or subscribe to the channel uh, have a wonderful day